Today we are going to be starting on day two of unit four. Um, we are going to be looking at the second half of our notes, the second of three parts, and then we're going to be doing a few pages in your packet that will be for a grade. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to turn to page two. Yesterday we highlighted on page two. Now we're going to keep going and we're going to look at concentration. So concentration refers to how much solute is in the solution. So if we look at this picture right here, you can see that the concentrated solution has a lot of solute dissolved in the solvent. And the diluted solution has very little solute. So when we look at this picture right here, we need to talk about the three types of concentrations. So we have saturated solutions, unsaturated solutions, and supersaturated. So if a towel or something is saturated, that means it is completely soaked and it cannot hold any more water. So a saturated solution is the same way. We have a set amount of solute that can be dissolved before some of the solute starts to fall out at the bottom. So a saturated solution is holding all of the solute that it can. If you've ever made lemonade with lemonade powder, you know that if you pour too much in, it clumps up at the bottom. We don't want that to happen. We wanna put in just enough. So putting in just enough solute that will dissolve in your solution is a saturated solution. So right here, we notice a couple of things. As temperature goes up, we can dissolve more grams of solute. So we know that temperature helps a solution dissolve more solute. So on this slide, what I want you to highlight is that a saturated solution, which we'll zoom in on, a saturated solution contains all of the solute that it can hold at a given temperature. As the temperature increases, amount of solid solute that can dissolve also increases. Okay, so now let's think about another situation. There is a situation in which we don't have enough solute. If you don't have enough solute, your solution is unsaturated. That means it doesn't have as much as it could dissolve. So when we heat a solution, a lot of times that will help dissolve more and it'll make it unsaturated. So when we look at a solubility curve tomorrow, we'll see that an unsaturated solution can always dissolve more solute to get up to a saturated point. So if we look at an unsaturated solution, an unsaturated solution is any solution that can dissolve more solute at a given temperature. Heating becomes unsaturated. Okay? So, if we flip over to the top of the next page, we're gonna be looking at something called supersaturated. Okay, so a supersaturated solution is one that has more solute than it can hold at the same temperature. If you're thinking about a powder in a liquid, like powder that you put in your water to give it flavoring, if you put in too much, it'll clump up at the bottom. That's called a precipitate. Something crystallizes out. You can notice right here, there is a crystal that's formed rock candy when you put too much sugar syrup into the solution it will crystallize out so if you have too much solute more than your saturated solution it is super saturated and that is a very unstable solution so a super saturated solution is one that contains more solute than a saturated solution at the same temperature they are unstable and i want you to write the word precipitate that means that that crystal is gonna form at the bottom. All right, so let's review this. If we look at three pictures of different solutions, an unsaturated solution can dissolve more solute, a saturated solution has all that it can hold, and a supersaturated solution is unstable because it crystallizes out there at the bottom. It's too concentrated, has a precipitate forming at the bottom. So when we look at this, unsaturated, more solute can dissolve, saturated, no more solute, super saturated, unstable, crystals form. So now it says to go to page seven. So let's look at page seven. On page seven, you are going to write what your saturated and unsaturated and super saturated solutions are. 
So first I want you to look at saturated. A saturated solution is one that holds all of the solute that it can dissolve at a given temperature. And the reason we say at a given temperature is because we know that heating a solution actually helps to dissolve more. So if you haven't written that, go ahead and pause it and write that down. How can a saturated solution, one that has dissolved all of the solute that it can, become unsaturated? We can heat the solution because heating a saturated solution makes it un saturated. All right, so when we heat it, we dissolve more, which means now we can add more, it unsaturates it. And an unsaturated solution is a solution that can hold more solute at a given temperature. Remember, temperature is really important here because it affects how much solute will dissolve. And the last thing we need to talk about is supersaturated solutions. Supersaturated solutions are ones that, supersaturated solutions contain more solute than the solution can dissolve at a given temperature. Okay, now since it contains more solute, some falls out at the bottom and we call that a precipitate. So we're gonna write precipitate forms and that makes it unstable. And based on what we know about changing the solubility of a solution, solubility is how much solute will dissolve. If we have a saturated solution and we want it, if we have a super saturated solution, super saturated, and we want to make it saturated, so we want to dissolve a little bit more, we know that what we need to do is add heat or we could say increase the temperature. All right, now we are gonna go back to page three. So if you look back at page three, we are gonna be looking at the bottom where it says conductivity and concentration. So for solutions, we talked about yesterday, if a solution breaks down and dissolves and ionizes, we can conduct electricity. So it has to ionize and have ions in the solution in order for there to be any conductivity. That means it most likely needs to be an ionic bond. Now, other weak acids can conduct electricity some, but if we have higher concentrations of ions, we have higher conductivity of electricity. So the more solute you have, the greater chance you have of conducting electricity. All right. So let's talk about how fast things dissolve in liquids. So if we have gases and rate of dissolving, I want you to always think of the same example. So let's always think of hot coffee right here. You have a cup of hot coffee, you want to put sugar in it. In order for that sugar to dissolve, sugar is a solid being dissolved in a liquid. In order to dissolve that sugar faster, we want to stir it. We want the particles to be very small. We don't want a huge clump of sugar. It dissolves faster if it's small. And we want high temperatures. You don't want your coffee to be cold. If you've ever tried to put sugar in a cold drink, it doesn't dissolve very well. If we do all three at the same time, that really helps our rate of dissolving a solid in a liquid. All right, now let's look at a gas dissolving in a liquid. Now for this, I always want you to think of a 
soft drink. Okay, with a soft drink, whether it's canned or bottled, you have carbonated, I'm sorry, you have carbonic acid in there that's going to make it um, carbonated. And that carbon dioxide in there is in the gas form. That's why when you take the lid off, it pops or makes a noise. And so we're talking about dissolving a gas, carbon dioxide, in a liquid. So let's think about this. If we have a two liter and we want it to stay fizzy, we don't want it to go flat, we want the gas to stay dissolved in the liquid, we do not want to shake it. No shaking or stirring. So that's the opposite of a solid dissolving. We want there to be high pressure. You need that lid on. And we want low temperatures. You don't want your drink to get hot. So with a solid dissolving in a liquid, we want it to be hot. With a gas dissolving in a liquid, we want it to be cool. So turn to page eight. If we turn to page eight, we see a few things right here. One is the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to label these with numbers. And I need you to be sure your numbers look like mine. We are gonna put one for the option adding the solute in large chunks. Two for adding it quickly. Three for adding it slowly. Four for cooling it. Five for crushing it. Six for increasing the pressure. Seven for leaving it untouched. Eight for stir the solution and nine for warming the solvent. Okay, so here's what we need to see. At the top, this is going to be about dissolving solids. So be sure you write that. And at the bottom, this is about dissolving gases. So <clears throat> I need to see if these characteristics increase the rate of dissolving, decrease the rate of dissolving, or don't affect it at all. And I want you to really pay attention about the fact that we are going to talk about what we know and what we have just talked about. Some of these, if we got more detailed, we might could figure out do affect the rate. But for the scope of this class, we're focused on the three things we talked about for each type of solution. So the first says add it in large chunks. We want to add our solid, it said, in small particles. So adding it in large chunks is going to decrease the reaction rate for a solid. You can't add gases in chunks, so it's gonna have no rate change. So I'm gonna have my numbers on either side, but I gotta think about how it affects a solid in a gas. So adding the solute quickly or adding it slowly, we did not talk about those causing a change. So we're gonna write two and three for no rate change. All right. Four says to cool the solvent. We know that for a solid to dissolve in a liquid, So we know that when we want a solid to dissolve, we want it to be hot. So cooling the solvent is not going to increase the rate of reaction. It is going to decrease it. But we know that with a gas, we don't want it to be at high temperatures. We want it to be at low temperatures. So cooling it would actually increase the rate of a gas dissolving in a liquid. Now, I want you to pause it. I want you to do five through nine and turn in your packet.